hello everyone and welcome to another video here today we're actually covering adina on adina well i do believe this is actually the highest ranked adina player in kr today we've got amir with us how are you doing today amir i am doing amazing getting to watch i think one of my favorite players as uh i've actually been following adina for a while um his journey through solo queue and then through a bit of pro play as well. Um, it's been kind of inspiring to watch someone just pick up a character and be so dedicated to them that they become essentially a different beast whenever they lock them in. For sure. Now, actually, we specifically picked this game not only because, I mean, Adina is the Adina Goat, but there's some really interesting setups that are kind of going on here. I, we have nullification. We have, I believe, stellar charge as the main augment being used. And I believe we also get a really interesting arm piece being crafted. All different factors that are just not very normal on this character. Yeah, and it's, uh, it leads to, I am going to hope, a very interesting game to watch because we don't see too many people doing things that are off meta it's kind of like you know one person figures something out and then everyone starts picking it up but when you are i guess the best at your character you have to be that person figuring it out well exactly i think i think at this point here as being the top player this is going to be a build that's either going to break the mold and we're going to start seeing a lot of people doing and copying this build or you know what it was another experimentation and we'll be moving on and working on something completely different the next day uh yeah. we're we're excited to see how this goes because i mean the results look really well and an interesting thing too is that we've got a triple range comp which adina works really well in so we'll probably see some really really interesting fights and play styles here we also have a bit of a double-ish support comp as Adina does have a bit of a supportive capabilities in her kit and we do have the Johan as well with an AR ISIL. He's going to be having the game of his life. Oh, for sure. Now, to just kind of go over a bit of Adina, Adina here can be a bit of a confusing character, but her first ability passive, Stargazing, makes her have Celestial Signs and they're used to alter the effect of her skills and casting a skill consumes Adina's currently selected celestial sign. You can actually see these right under her mana bar. Once all the signs have been consumed, Adina enters a state of stargazing, which refills all of the empty slots with new signs and increases her movement speed, which is really, really useful for kiting. Next is her Q luminary. Uh, she launches a sphere in a targeted direction, dealing damage to an enemy hit. Now, based on which one you choose so if you choose sun it does increase damage if you choose moon it stuns the target on impact and star leaves a trail which increases movement speed of her and her allies now the mechanic that we didn't talk about is conjunct so you once you have two suns so if you have two of the sun icons aligned she will get a sun conjunct which will cause her to fire a larger sphere dealing massive damage and burning enemies her second skill w as astral trine uh, this creates a triangle at a target location dealing damage to enemies hit if it's the sun it deals increased damage moon stuns and star gives allies a shield if they're hit the moon conjunct uh makes it so that the two when she has two aligned moon symbols she draws two triangles instead of one and each deals damage the first one stuns and the second one will slow her E, Faded Horizon, she'll mark a target and deal damage to them, and then a celestial body will descend upon the target, dealing damage to enemies in range. It does not deal damage to allies, but the celestial signs for this sun increases damage. Moon stuns the target on impact, and star will actually fall a little bit faster and heal an ally. The star conjunct for this one will make it so that when... The comet it actually lands the ground. It'll leave a nebula healing allies within the circle. And lastly is her ultimate, Celestial Prophecy. So this, all this really does is this allows you to swap between your signs. You'll notice there's a sign on the far left. That's a saved sign that you can swap between with the current most active sign. And it also allows you to cast your conjunct skills. And there can only be one conjunct skill cast per cycle. 
Yeah, and I think <laughs> for a lot of people, when Adina came out, uh, she was referenced as the, the Tetris character, where you're kind of throwing out all of your pieces and then swapping out whenever you don't need a piece, saving it for later, trying to find the most optimal route, clearing up your bar as fast as possible, as she used to actually have a bit of a bonus on this passive, giving a bit of extra odd... Uh, she had an on-hit bonus after she reset all of her stars, but that has sadly been removed. And it seems like Adina kind of wants to bring it back, running Stellar Charge, trying to find that replacement. Yeah, technically that does kind of bring it back to a degree. But the, the main thing too also is like, you know, a lot of what I read about with Adina and her abilities, kind of a bit of a mouthful, might seem like a lot to her, but her character actually, once you start playing her, becomes a lot more simple. It's usually uh, what a lot of Adina players classify it as is counting. Uh, I, I believe a lot of them say, if, you know, you can count up the, uh, up the two, you can you can play Adina. And the main logic behind it is, is a lot of times you're just kind of spewing out all of your spells at once to kind of set yourself up. So you're usually going something along the lines of if you wanted like a, a moon conjunct, you would press like your Q or your E, and then you'd probably press R to switch to your moon, and then you'd press your W for that, and then you'd finish off with your Q or E. Or if your if your your moon was further away in the lineup, right? So the second last one instead of the third last one, then you could go and press Q E R w instead it's uh it's interesting to think about but yeah it's, it's usually either you're pressing one button or two buttons before you press your r to swap around yeah and a nice thing that i do think we forgot to touch on is that your conjuncts are actually treated as a separate cooldown um so if you wanted to use your u with the sun conjunct if you press Q and you use the star, uh, if you used like a star Q and you wanted to use the sun conjunct, it is not attached to your Q cooldown. So it is a separate cooldown, meaning that you can use two Qs in a row, which you'll see sometimes. He'll throw a star Q and then instantly right after throw a stun sun Q or something along the lines of moon into... You can go double moon, or sorry, moon into like sun moon or sun W and it's... Uh, it's a lot of thinking about your character, just realizing what you need in the moment and looking to looking to get that conjunct online. Yeah, exactly. I knew you're right. I did forget to mention that. Yeah, it, the the conjuncts are their own separate thing, so you don't have to. They don't share a cooldown with the same Q. So if you press the Q, yeah, you can go Q Q um, for a lot more impact there. We actually do see a bit of a fight coming out. He was able to just walk away from the yawn as he did use the. Uh, we used our, sorry, our nullification. I'm forgetting the name. Nullification. Thank you. Um, to get the bonus movement speed and also our Q on start as well. Just making sure that we can get out, throwing our W on ourselves so that we got a shield as well. And it's small things like this. If if you just don't use nullification in time or you don't use your star Q, then that yawn might have the opportunity to just get on you and then you're on the floor fight looks completely different than this but because he knows what his character wants to do where he wants to play maybe walking a bit too far up into a bush but uh knows he can just walk away if he needs to well yeah i think the thing is is that because they're triple mage at this point or triple range they kind of one of them has to be sort of the the sacrifice and i'm really impressed with the fact that that fight looked so clean even though it should have been such a, a terrifying fight for them where a, a double melee team dived in from a bush yeah and we see even in this fight like playing against double melee and arranged we're kind of playing in the felix's reign he was just able to walk up auto attack us but it didn't matter too much we have two people on our team that can heal us throwing a lot of sun conjuncts with our q and then just Pressing E on ourselves whenever we have the star, healing ourselves. Our Johan is healing us as well. And if the if the Felix walks a bit too close in the melee range of us, then he's also taking damage. Do kind of miss a few abilities on that four. Just a bit too far away, misjudging our ability range. But, um, yeah. I know 
a lot of Adina players like to think that uh, when you're learning this character, learn how to get to whatever junk you want as fast as possible. And a lot of them just start to focus on one and then keep moving from there. Just learn how to get sun online every time. Keep doing sun, keep doing sun, and then you move on once you know sun. Keep doing moon, keep doing moon, and once you know how to get to moon, you keep doing star. And it's... I think the only reason people do this is Adina meta does change the abilities you level, the conjunct you're going for. It changes with the way that she is balanced. Sometimes her W is really strong, and you just need to be using moon often. Sometimes her E is really strong, and you need to be getting to star as often and a majority of the time your Q is really strong and uh you just need to be getting to sun exactly plus also i mean again this character is very very muscle memory she she feels really overwhelming and complex for the first couple hours of playing her but once you start getting muscle memory of being comfortable with her buttons it becomes that right so if you simplify yourself and you're only going to go for certain uh, conjuncts it makes it much easier until eventually you can become a master kind of like adina here where i mean half the time we're, we're seeing them throw different combinations just to get a specific conjunct that they want at any time because if you know what your button co combinations are you can always do that but early on you do just kind of want to be comfortable throwing out all of your abilities as fast as you can to just get through that gaze so you get your movement speed and you can get your next conjunct right away yeah and it actually thinking about this we're playing emerald tablet nullification um we are playing movement speed adina we're gonna be zooming across the map really fast just throw our star q hit people three times nullification and we're gonna get so much movement speed i don't think anyone can touch us Actually, what I'm curious, yeah, the movement speed's crazy, but what I'm curious about is the stellar charge, like, what does it do to our cooldown? Because, oh, we actually just use nullification to get movement speed to chase this guy. Yeah, um, well, it doesn't do too much for our cooldowns. I think stellar charge is more of a weave it in while we're playing. Um, it's a decent amount of damage. Um, late game, it can be hitting for like 100 to 200 damage every auto attack. And if we ever mess up, it is a very nice way to bail ourselves out as, like, if we just don't use a conjunct, um, which sometimes does happen if you mess it up a bit too badly, then a lot of your cooldowns are just going to be, like, 5 seconds, 4 seconds. You're going to be waiting a bit too long. You just weave that auto attack in, and then now you have them all back up, just start weaving them again and fix your cooldown. Oh, you know what? That is actually makes a lot of sense. That would explain a lot for it. Because I was going to say, the passive doesn't make sense, right? Because it doesn't... Most times, if you are using your abilities appropriately, you shouldn't need it and it shouldn't really do anything because you're locked out and you automatically reset your cooldowns after you've used a full combo. But you're right. If you did technically mess up or if you just, you know, didn't intend to use a conjunct for whatever reason... At that point, yeah, you can always recover yourself and getting yourself back into the fight by auto-attacking. And then the second half of it, like you mentioned, the damage is okay. But normally, like, if, you're, if we're really looking for damage, it's probably going to be like the other Adinas where it's going to be uh, Red Sprite or Ghost Light. Yeah, I know Adina loves Ghost Light because Sun does a lot of damage all at once. So, also, we're going to see Bikini coming out for Adina. Um, not an item we see built too often, but... She's got the persona, so she doesn't need the uh, the holy orders coming online. Yeah. Plus, also, it, she's probably she's playing the front line. She she's the front line of the team, so it makes sense <laughs> to be a little tanky. But this is this is a build and a half here. Nullification one, bikini, and and we're also just running every humanly possible tank there. There there's the tank scuttle crab going. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of damage coming out, but. Now we're just shielding, we're healing. It doesn't matter. We are actually the front line. This might be the build of the century. Just allowed to walk up, eat all the damage in the world. And because we have a support alongside we have ourselves, we're just healing ourselves. We're seeing the Charlotte Heart come out, thanking our Johan for saving our, it, ourselves there. I can't tell if it's the Adina that's completely broken or if it's the Johan. I mean, it's 
a lot of both. We're seeing the Johan come out, give the healing. In that time, we're able to keep stunning, throw out these shields for ourselves, throw our star E right on top of ourselves, healing us for like 300. And then we also have Bikini giving us this massive shield. It's... It's a combination of just too much going on that I don't think our opponents are able to deal with it. Well, I mean, I, I'll i be real with you. I'm pretty sure that they thought once they got that great catch onto Adina that the fight was over and they were going to be able to just steamroll it and didn't realize that Adina actually lost no HP and then zoomed away. Yeah, it is a very hard comp to fight. Not something I think anyone would see often. Um, kind of looks like we're just... You know, maybe playing the game a bit too much for fun. But um, that is what we're here for. We play the game to make sure that we enjoy it. Enjoy every moment that we can uh, that we can have playing whatever character we want. And I think Adina has just hit this point where, you know, we know we're good enough at this character. We know that no matter what we do, we have the mechanics just to start doing some uh, some different stuff look at this movement speed she's just so fast yeah the second we get pointed at just nullification that throw abilities out proc the emerald tablet get the speed hit like i think 6.0 run away alonzo can't chase that and then we're so much damage still coming up doesn't really matter and then the auto attack is also dealing so much with our stellar charge popping and just unable for our opponents to fight our oh sorry our Isol is actually going to fall on the floor, but it doesn't matter. We're throwing so many Sun Conjuncts, it hits the enemy Adina, and she just falls on the floor. Now the moon into Star, and then she's falling on the floor. Sadly, our, we're not able to use the White Lily perfectly. It doesn't matter. Alonzo's going to point at us. We're healing ourselves while our team is just resetting. So much damage coming out. Healing ourselves more. It didn't even, like, Alonzo couldn't even contest. Yeah, I don't know if you realize there, but she activated Nullification to speed herself in to clean up that fight when I uh, ISIL fell down. So our ISIL overextended and as ISIL died, she was nullification three speed boosting in for the zoomies to get the kill. Yeah, this is a build and a half. This is not something you're gonna see often. And I think it's because you can only play this well on a build like this when you really understand everything your character wants to do. So much damage coming out over to the Kacha and two abilities healing ourselves, getting healed by our Johan, getting a full reset as Wick team is going to be following us from behind. But we're able to throw so much damage out, use so much utility, throwing the stuns down, making sure that our team is safe, resetting our abilities now, getting our, con or our stars back online. That was scary, but it didn't matter because we know that we can help our Isol out, throwing down heals, throwing down stuns. If he needs a shield, maybe giving him some of that. And then, oh my god, realizing that they're going to jump over, getting the stun, using the sun, doing so much damage out. And I think we're going to be backing off here. Yeah, no, I mean, right now, I mean, Adina is just showing so much kind of like pressure here in the, into the fight. Well, we'll have to see how this take this again. They're really scared. They don't want to be dove on. And I mean, the enemy team doesn't want to dive into this because I think they just win it. If, especially because like Priya trying to put in pressure. We have the Kenneth going in on to the Johan. Probably one of the better targets, but I think it's got to be Isol. But since Isol just gets the free reign, since they try to go on to the Adina and Johan, it doesn't matter. Isol just gets to clean up for free. Yeah, and that was uh, very unfortunate for the Priya as she used her ult in a pretty good pos uh, position. But Adina just nullification three, getting two seconds of CC immunity meaning that nothing matters. She just walks through both of the different dance zones and uh, says, hey, your ult is no more. Oh, here comes the nullification. Did, can Priya yeah. even make it? Uh, I don't think she makes it. Five seconds is not enough. Wait, two, three, two? One. Oh, if we were just a bit faster, I think she can make it. That's but... actually kind of crazy on how fast she almost made that. I mean, Priya is known for her movement speed, and she is also in, uh, this is the Strong Wind, uh, which increases your base movement speed as well. As we see, our Adina is hitting 5.3 when she's walking with the current. Uh, I think it's 4. Point, yeah, 4.13 when she has nothing else, but our Adina also does have, um, the, I think it's point, I think it's Point 0.1 or point 0.06 on our headpiece from Persona. Um, one of the reasons I love Persona. 
keeping your movement speed still. One of the few items that are not boots that give that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna jump over, try and find the good positioning last fight. And I think we're probably gonna play it in a similar way where we're running up, tanking a lot for our team as we have an insanely big shield. Well, exactly. Uh, we we just want we want everyone to be looking at Adina really at this point because if Isol is not being focused, I think Isol just beats every single target here, and Adina is just so slippery with this movement speed. I I honestly genuinely love this. I hope all of the Adina players that watch this start running this build. Yeah, and we see a lot of damage coming out. He got a stun over on the uh, on the Hedgen, and then. Just throws a sun conjunct over while we're tanking all of the alex damage coming out it did not matter we just we have so much so many tank stats and yeah now are the alex is gonna run over completely ignores us so i think he realizes that uh it doesn't matter what he does throwing out the adina win emote mid fight knowing that this fight's over for them and uh, being left in the 1v1 against a rooted target. I don't know if we'll be able to hit anything on him, sadly. But throwing the moon, it gets the stun, hits the stun, or W as well. Trying to predict the Hedgen taking the E, hits another moon, and then just throwing over a few conjuncts. I think we're going to be fine as long as we're able to get some of these health reset. Um, yeah, using, oh my god, using the moon, stunning, and then just using our D skill, bursting him down. Yeah, no, absolutely incredible plays there coming from our Dina. Really just showing what this character can do as a carry mage as well as a support. And technically, even as a tank in a triple range comp. I really hope you guys got some really good insight from this game. And we will see you in the next one.